I'm Tammy Robel from Early Choices, and I'm joined here today by my colleagues at Family Matters and the Early Intervention Training Program. Thanks for viewing our last webinar in this series that addresses early intervention family outcomes. This webinar is about accessing the community. This session is being recorded and it will be available later on our respective websites and social media accounts. So today we're gonna to give you a little more information and some additional resources that address the early intervention family outcomes. We're going to give you these tools, but you can always reach out to us for additional information. Here are our big ideas for today's webinar. Why do I, or should I think about accessing my community? How do I access my community more than I already am? Who are my community supports? And what resources do I have? We're going to explore what community is and build your capacity to be able to access your community resources. We invite you to share in this quote by Henrik Ibsen. Henrik Ibsen was a Norwegian playwright, and he said, a community is like a ship. Everyone ought to be prepared to take the helm. It takes many of us to be able to get a ship to its destination. So first we're gonna start with why. Why do I need to access my community? Our resources change from, our resource needs change from day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. It's important to be able to access our community resources because it helps our family, it helps our child, it helps our children learn and grow. We know that community outings benefit children, but they also benefit the entire family because we get more opportunities to be able to spend quality time together. While being at home provides time to physically be close to one another, there's so much going on that it doesn't necessarily mean you can spend quality time connecting on a social emotional level. Physically leaving the home together and spending time focused on a shared activity can benefit the child. Outings also benefit the caregivers in mentally stepping away from all the tasks that we focus on so we can focus on our loved ones and have some fun. Strengthening those connections with your family can be so positive and it leaves us feeling refreshed and maybe a little tired, which also helps our mindsets when returning home. Any new experience is gonna provide your child with a newfound understanding or perspective. The more they see your experience, the more their cognition builds. They may encounter new types of nature or city life, new people or new challenges to overcome. You can be a guide to your child by pointing out something about this new environment to spark a conversation or help them to begin to notice similarities and differences. Your child doesn't even need to have to respond, but just having the shared attention on something new outdoors can really get them thinking. As much as conversations help build cognition, the best way for a child to learn is by actively trying something new themselves. When we give them some sense of control and allow them to explore freely, we're giving them the opportunity to follow their interests and try new experiences and problem solve. Of course, we don't mean that they should be left without supervision, but giving some of that independence can really support their understanding of new experiences. 
Oftentimes there are a lot of unexpected situations that help children learn during these outings. For example, coming across different animals like squirrels or dogs when you're near a park can also provide opportunities for more like on the spot learning for your child. So when we think about our goal being able to access our community more than we already are, we need to think about how are we going to share information about our child and what kind of information is going to be important for us to share so that we can fully access our community. Sharing is advocating. It's not always easy for us to share information, but once you have built trust with another, you feel more comfortable and you feel safer to share. Our child's strengths and needs change and it's not always easy for us to share this information. There are resources that can guide you in sharing what your child's needs and strengths are. There are also community supports that offer multiple ways for you to build your community of trust and belonging. These community supports will help increase your access. Don't forget to reach out to your early intervention team. This includes your service coordinators, your parent liaisons, and the therapists. You also have access to family guides. There are a variety of tools that can help you determine what you would like to see happen for your child and family. The Early Childhood Technical Assistance Center has developed some family guides that can help families think about what is desired for their family. Some examples are included here. Seeing my child's strengths, my child learning while out and about, and families obtaining supports and resources. These family guides are available in both English and Spanish. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about community supports and give you some examples of local supports, statewide supports, and nationwide supports. Often community resources remain unused because we're just not sure how to access them. You can access community resources and learn more about what's available to you by reaching out to your local schools, your faith-based organizations like churches and civic organizations, your local child care resource and referral agency. There are also disability specific organizations. There's a family resource center on disabilities available in Chicago, and then Family Matters covers some of Chicago and the rest of the state. Early Intervention Clearinghouse has a lot of supports for families, a lot of information available, as does the Early Choices website. Early Choices focuses on inclusion for children with disabilities. There's also an Early Choices YouTube channel with a family channel built into that. And don't forget those other organizations like your local Head Starts and early Head Start agencies and your child's medical provider. So we've talked a little bit about asking and who to ask. We've talked about exploring. And now we're gonna talk about how to get more involved in your community. There's a birth to five action council and you can sign up for that now. They're looking for folks to be on the family council because we're wanting to look at specific communities in the state of Illinois and how families can have better access to early childhood experiences for children ages birth through five. Please think about getting involved. You can also reach out to local advisory councils school boards, and community agencies. There's all ways to get involved in your community. If you feel like you need additional help figuring out where your supports are, you might wanna check out a mapping tool. There's also an early intervention central directory where you can find a lot of different resources. 
So we're going to spend a little time now talking about mapping and what that is. So when we think about community mapping, we're figuring out, like if you think of a physical map, where are all the spots that I have access to? Where do I want to go? Where do, where do I want to be able to get to? And so when we think about that, when we're, when we're developing our own family map, we think about who are those people in our lives that are contributing toward um, our family well-being. And when we're thinking about our child, we're specifically thinking about who are those people that help care for our child? Who are those people that help provide support for our child? So we think about family members. We think about our neighbors. We think about people that we see when we visit places on a regular basis. That includes some of those early childhood programs. It also may include home visiting programs. This could include your local library, even your local university and college, and different support groups. And so then what you would do is write down all of these people that are supportive to you and your family. And this is also going to give you some additional ideas for what you might want to explore next. Who else do you want to add to your community map? As you access your community, anywhere you go, even if it's just down the block to mail a postcard, it can be a fun and rich experience for you and your child. Here are some easy strategies and helpful things to remember when you're out and about. Follow your child's leads and change your plans. Those unexpected discoveries are so rich and beneficial. Provide physical and emotional support so your child can enjoy those activities. And so you can enjoy those activities with your child. Take breaks when needed. Offer snacks when needed. Just talking about what you see is providing support for your child's thinking and language skills. So we encourage you to describe what you're seeing, what your children see, what your children see. Labeling those objects and actions and feelings and asking those open-ended questions. And have fun. If you give your child full attention and you have fun, you're deepening your relationship and that's what it's all about. An inclusive community values its members and helps them meet their basic needs so they can live with dignity, engage actively and contribute to the community. Knowing that all communities are different, there are some similarities in the ways we can measure if and how we are successfully accessing our community. If you're enrolled in early intervention, you already have started to access your community. Services are provided for the family unit, not just the child who is determined eligible. Some questions we can ask ourselves to see how we're accessing our community include, is my child able to participate in social, recreational, and religious activities that we want? Are we as a family able to do things we enjoy together? Are our child's medical and dental needs being met? Are our child care needs being met? Are our transportation needs being met? Do we have adequate food, clothing, and housing? Here are some additional resources we invite you to check out. Early Choices has a live binder that's available full of family resources. Paula Kluth is an inclusion advocate and offers a strengths and strategies profile form that you can fill out. And that will help you be able to think about and write down all of those strengths that your child has, what strategies have worked so you can share that with other people. Here's the website for additional information about community mapping. And then we have some additional articles for you 
Um, one would be fun things to do with toddlers. And then we have outdoor weekend family activities. And then what to expect on family outings. For additional information, we invite you to check out our websites. So here we have the Family Resource Center on Disabilities, Early Choices, the Early Intervention Clearinghouse, and Family Matters. We hope that you've gained knowledge that will help you be more prepared to take the helm. As a reminder, we recorded today's session and the previous sessions, so they are available for you to view when you're ready. You can find these recordings on our websites and some of our social media accounts. You can also find these recordings on the Early Choices YouTube page under the Family Channel. Thanks for taking the time to learn more about early intervention family outcomes.